This is Paul Page. We're back at the Michigan 500. The battle is back toward the front of the field. Nigel Mansell is the leader of the race. His teammate, Mario Andretti, in second place just behind him. But Mario is a lap down. And for the past few laps, he's been doing everything he can to catch his teammate and unlap himself. Try hard he's doing, Paul. We've been just been watching it here. Look at him. Running up really close, picking up a draft. You can see he had a little turbulence on his front wing. Slowed down a little bit. But boy, is he trying hard. Well, as we watch the two Newman Haas cars leading this race, we realize how quickly the tide can turn in automobile racing. The last few races have been all Penske, Penske, Penske. Now the irony is we come here to a track that is owned and run by Roger Penske, and his cars are not doing well. The championship is being a lead, and the championship is being wrested from Emerson Fittipaldi by Mansell. And these cars, as you see them here, are running 1-2. Mario Andretti tries his best to close in. He was the first pole sitter here at Michigan International. Now, 25 years later, he turned the fastest qualifying lap of any IndyCar driver in history. We asked him about the significance of that accomplishment. Yeah, it has... Uh a lot of significance for me, a lot of personal satisfaction, and then of course uh, uh, the way my team just uh, rallies behind me, I just feel so much like they deserve it, they deserve every bit that I can bring home, so that's an extra incentive for me to go after, and today we just tried, I think we did everything pretty right, you know, all of our guessing, you know, bang bang what we did last year, and, and triple satisfaction when it just all worked out. Even Nigel, very, very complimentary of Mario, saying, boy, you know, at his age, he's still so very racing. I bet he's calling the pitch right now saying, hey, who's this guy passing me? I'm leading the race. He's a lap down. Who is he? I think he's got a real good clue as Mario moves to the inside, trying to get alongside Nigel, and does so very quickly. Now, is that a solid pass, or was it an instruction? Was it a tactic? Nigel let him go. No, it's been a, it was a solid pass. Nigel didn't really let him go. I think Mario just been, he, been putting too much pressure on him because those guys are not planning it. Nigel knows that if the yellow comes out right now, that Mario's going to come around be right behind him, and that's like a lethal weapon. There is the man, of course, Carl Haas, working in the pits, who would know what all the political ramifications are between these two superstars. Take a look again at Mario Andretti. He closes to the back of Nigel Mansell, picks up the draft, and it works very well for him. Well, look at him just roll forward as soon as he's in there. And remember, Mario, very much a man looking ahead in his life. He and Deanne, his wife, are planning a new house in Nazareth, actually on, I think, Michael's property, and he's looking for a lot more racing. This is not his last season. He's not hanging it up at all. Talk of founding a team. Mansell at 2.15, Mario Andretti cut that last lap at 218 miles an hour, so Nigel was holding him up. Yes, he certainly was, but remember, it's just a shift of a gear. It's a gear ratio different. The more RPM they turn, and they'll turn about like when they want to, about 13,000, maybe a little bit more than 13,000 RPM, probably racing them about 12,500 RPM. But of course, if you are going to come down to a gear that's going to give you a little more power, you're also going to burn more fuel. We've had a race with only two yellows, and fuel can be a factor here. How wise is that? Well, they'll only do it like a passing gear, like a kick-down gear on an automatic transmission, Paul. They know that the fuel is going to get bad if they sit there and turn more than 13,000 RPM. And having a kick-down gear is something that all these cars still routinely do. Yes, they certainly do, and they don't even have to use the clutch when they shift them. The, the gear ratio is only about 10 to 15 hundredths difference. But remember, the more RPM, the more rim wheel torque, or the more power to the rear wheels that you get. Robbie Gordon, as he comes around, Bobby Rahal. This is a fight for position as well. Rahal was in 10th, now Gordon has it. Gary Gerald, do you have an update on Robbie? Well, indeed, Paul, in fact, I think we may be able to get a word with A.J. Foyt about Robbie Gordon. A.J., you got a problem with boost? Well, it seemed like it, but it's come back to about 44 inches. We fell about 41, so I don't know unless the wastegate stuck or something, but right now it's uh, not 45 inches, 44, but we're still running between 215, 217. If we can finish, we'll be in good shape. We just got by Ray Hall and moved up to another spot. This young man's first time at Michigan. He's been pretty impressive on these high backs. Well, that's true. Uh, you know, I just, that's all we want to do is finish. All right, AJ. Thank you. 
We're past the halfway point, 149 laps into the record book, just about 101 laps to go. Robbie Gordon, there's the serial scoring. Great interface between our graphics folks and the computers here, able to give us this enhanced information now, doing a great job down there. Yeah, you know, just stop and think now, when they put that pad to hold his head up against, he had to get reused to that all over again. So he spent a lot of time that we haven't seen him on the track, just trying to get his driving accompanying to where his head is gonna be and how the pad's gonna feel. Because obviously he had a helmet strap before. You see him ripped by Emerson Fittipaldi there, of course. Remember that he, too, like Paul Tracy, is 24 years old. And don't think that Gordon hasn't been grinding his teeth a little bit this year as he's watched Paul Tracy succeed. Now Tracy is out of the race, and Gordon is on the move. By the way, we mentioned at the beginning of the race the possibility of showers in the area of being 60%. It looks like that's drifting slowly and slowly away from us. It's bright sun over the track right now. And it does not appear from looking out the top of the giant grandstand that you see on your right there here at Michigan International that there is any threatening weather anywhere off to the west, and that's where it come from. Yeah, and just look at the blue sky right out of Scott's car. Look at the blue sky up in the air. That looks so much better than it did for us earlier, Bo. Goodyear runs in seventh place right now. Roberto Guerrero is just ahead of him in sixth place, and Scott Goodyear has been closing in. This is an important drive for Guerrero, by far his best run since Long Beach much earlier in the year. He's doing whoops as I speak of him, he's making heading a pit down stop. For the pits. Guerrero has gone a full 39 laps since his last stop, so he peels off. Goodyear screams on past, and this should be routine for Roberto Guerrero. He's a little bit out of the pit stop sequence. Nigel Mansell has gone 33 laps since his last stop, so you would expect within the next few at least, Nigel Mansell will be turning down into the pits, and that will give Mario Andretti, who's on the same lap, an opportunity to catch up. They think he's about 14 laps away from the stop, though. Roberto had a little bit of front end push, because I noticed they turned the left front wing up just a little bit. It's a nice, soft adjustment. They gave him one full turn, about one degree for a wing that small. Nice adjustment. Like Guerrero, like Lyman Dyke, Guerrero had his background in road racing, but has really come to excel on these very past ovals. Interesting. Now, I just saw Roberto leaving, Sam. You could see he got over that yellow line a little bit. He's got to be careful the Wally doesn't see that because that's what the stop and go penalties come from. Nigel Mansell still the leader. Mario Andretti by getting around him, joined him on the leader lap in second place. In third, a lap behind is Raul Boisel, then Ari, then Teo Fabi, and then Scott Goodyear, three laps behind. 154 laps complete at Michigan. Back at the Michigan 500, Teo Fabi, fifth place. Started in eighth, been running a very steady run. He's winless this season. Driving for Jim Hall, the Hall BDS team. That's a team that has, in the past, done very little testing. But Jim has taken over and said, hey, we've got to do some testing development work because we're sliding behind. And he's starting to run a lot better from the Paul. Testing, of course, is the order of the day if you want to be successful. But testing is also some of what's driving some of the cost of IndyCar racing up. So they're trying to limit that a little bit, aren't they, Bobby? Well, testing wears out engines. Engines are, you know, you're looking at roughly $2.8 million a year in a normal engine program. So it really is costing a lot of money. And if you break pieces, that costs a lot of money, too. Well, Fabi was fifth at Phoenix and fourth at Long Beach earlier in the year. Uh, but he has not had a high finish since then. And the team, ironically, seems to have been improving, but they haven't had the results. So this will be very encouraging as he lies fifth right now. And a lot of talk about a drug-free sport. You're talking drug-free. IndyCar racing, auto racing in general, definitely won. And in fact, the organizations that try and promote drug awareness do get involved with motorsports for that very reason. For example, today here at the track, as Tail Fabi makes his turn in, there were 25 police cars from the different districts here in Michigan associated with DARE, the Doug Drug Abuse Resistance Education Program, with kids in the cars that competed for the opportunity to be here, and they're having a great time here today. Tail Fabi, fifth place, 41 laps since his last stop, and Jack Roots right there. Well, Mario Andretti trying to bring his car to a stop, does it nicely, lifts up the visor, and will take some water and some fluids. It's been very hot here during the stop. A nominal stop for Mario. No major changes contemplated by the Newman Haas Racing Team. But they are going over the radiator areas very carefully, removing any debris. He's off and away in 15.2 seconds. Nigel Mansell will be back in this time around, gentlemen. <laughs> 